class of 2026, Dr. Richardson here. How is everyone doing? I hope you're doing well. Um, as you remember, one of the fun things that I like to do is I like to think about where I could travel to, if I could go anywhere in the world. And I think you remember I went to the I went to China, the Great Wall. I went to um, oh, where else have I been? And how, where else have I traveled to? So many places, China, Japan. Last week I went to the pyramids and now guess where I am? You can probably guess this is a very, very, very famous statue. So you've probably already guessed I am in Rio de Janeiro, which is in which country? Brazil. If you said Brazil, you're correct. Yes, I'm in Brazil and it's beautiful here. It's beautiful, the weather's beautiful, everything's beautiful, it's awesome. <laughs> um, Funny thing about me, though, I've always wanted to go here because I just think it's absolutely amazing. It's, it's supposed to be just everything is wonderful, but um, I'm a little scared of heights. So to actually hike up to here would be like crazy scary, but it would be a lot of fun. So I would probably practice my if then plan, which would be if I get um if I get scared or nervous, then I will breathe and calm down. So that would be my if then plan to climb up here because if I ever went there, I would definitely wanna climb up there if I could. So anyway, so now we're gonna go get into our lesson which is basically a review of everything that we have done so far. And it's kind of putting everything together and um, coming up with a product. I'm gonna to talk to you about that in just a second. So now we're gonna to go to the PowerPoint, which is gonna explain what you guys are gonna to do today. So like I mentioned before, we're gonna put everything together. Isn't this a lovely, I just really like this, um, this, this slide, uh, putting it all together, helping others by sharing what you've learned. And that's what you guys are gonna to do today. You're gonna to help somebody else. So here's the objectives. So you're gonna write a letter of advice. It doesn't, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about this, but, um, because I want there to be flexibility on how you do this. And like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But you're going to uh, write this letter or give advice to a sixth grade student who's trying to learn something new and could and could feel like giving up. Remember how you felt when you were in sixth grade and it was you just came from elementary school, the end of first quarter, and you're like, oh, my goodness, what's happened to these grades? Um, it just felt a little overwhelming. And you're like, how am I going to get through middle school, much less high school, all of that. So I want you to think what you're going to do today is you're going to reach that person to encourage them. And what you're going to put in that letter is you're actually going to pull everything together that you've been learning um, from Wildcat Wellness. And I'm going to do a quick review in a minute and go over some of the things that you could include in your letter or in your advice or what, however we want to do this. But this is the two objectives that we have today. So here's the steps in writing your letter of advice. Step one, you're going to think of your audience. Step two, you're going to choose your situation. Step three, when giving advice, like I mentioned earlier, you're always, you want to use what you know. That's the best teacher is use what you know, use what you've learned, what you've experienced. That is the best. Your testimony is, is, is really going to help and reach these kids and just and students and just encourage them. Uh, a letter could be individually or you could do it as a group, a class project, a paragraph, a PowerPoint, um, a flip grid, you know, whatever your class would, decides to do, uh, just be creative. Um, I, I am happy to do however, whatever I can do to get these letters to the sixth grade team. If teachers want to email me or whatever, I'll be happy to do whatever I can to get this because I just think this is really a neat assignment. And you guys are the experts on getting through sixth grade. You know so much more than I do or some of your teachers may know about how to get through sixth grade because you just experienced it and you were successful. So I want you to pass along what you, 
what you know and apply what you've learned through um, Wildcat Wellness. And then you're at, what you're gonna do is you're gonna just submit it to your teacher and um, we're gonna go from there. So step one in anything is to know your audience, know who you're writing to. I want you to think about for a second, imagine writing a letter to your sixth grade self. You know, where you were this time last year, you know, wouldn't it have been nice to have gotten a letter to encourage? So think about writing a letter to your sixth grade self, how you felt at that time. And then also you could think about some of the sixth graders that you know, because I'm sure you know a lot of those sixth graders. You went to elementary school with them, they live in your neighborhood um, or something like that or your siblings, you know, write a letter, you know, think of them as your audience. So think of them as, as you're writing this letter to them and things that you would wanna say. So these are just some situations that I came up with. Uh, I'm not gonna read all these to you, but these were just some things that I know students have talked to me about. One of the big ones is when someone's talking about you, how to overcome that. Uh, if then plan would work perfectly for that. So just look over these and you guys can pick one of these as a group or how, like again, however your teacher wants to do this activity. I think this would be so meaningful to those sixth graders coming into Griffin for the very first time. This is so different for them. It's different for all of us, but they've never even been in the building. At least you've been, at least you know how the building works and you know different uh, people here, staff in the building, they don't. So. Um, I think this would be a really good way for these kids to help to help them feel welcome. So these were just some things that I thought of. Um, there may be more. Like I said, you've gone through this before. You're the expert on this. So if you want to come up with your own, feel free. I just need to make sure that you guys know it's appropriate. Uh, and I know you know what that looks like, so I don't need to tell you what that looks like. Your teachers could probably talk about what needs to be appropriate and what is inappropriate because we cannot give anything to the sixth graders that's inappropriate. We want to make sure that we maintain respect and that we are courteous in everything that we do, especially when it's someone younger that's looking up to you. And that's what you're like. A, you're like a role model for them. Um, I also ask that when you guys come up with these situations to just leave some, if you know like of a situation that happened to you, leave, keep all names out of this. We wanna protect confidentiality. We wanna, we wanna protect um, students' identity. So be sure you do not put any names in anything that you write. So thank you in advance for being so respectful. So um, step three, like we talk about is use what you know. That, that is the best thing to do because you can really write strong when you actually know the material. So use what you've learned, use what you know, how you've applied, because I know like I've applied different things that I've learned from these lessons. So I hope that you have as well. That would be a good, that would be a good piece of evidence to, to put in your letter to, to encourage the students. So just to give you a quick review, and I'm going to go over this a little bit more with you, just some of the topics that we'd like for you to include would be how the brain grows and gets stronger, uh, what they can say to themselves to create this growth mindset, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, how to identify if the roadblock is eternal or external, an if-then plan for the roadblock. And remember, like I mentioned before, you want to keep, you want them to feel encouraged and to understand how they can learn from their mistakes, just like you have, just like we all are still learning from our mistakes, how to overcome the roadblocks and to not give up. That is the key. We do not want people to give up. So just here is a quick review. I think it was the second lesson we talked about a neuron and that's a cell that sends and receives signals in your brain. So it's, it's out for their sending signals. A neural pathway is a collection of neurons, was so a collection of these cells that form in your, in your brain when you repeat an action or thought, it actually makes your brain grow. So you can actually make your brain, brain grow through re, repetition, practice, and becoming better at something. More of those pathways will be created. Mistakes, to look at a mistake as a learning opportunity that helps to develop that growth mindset that we talked about. 
And a growth mindset is the belief. That's the key thing, guys. It's a belief. You believe that your brain can grow and change. And it is it's proven by science that your brains can grow. This is not just a school counselor talking here. It can actually grow and change. It's not fixed, but through practice, one can always improve. A roadblock, that's something that gets in your way of achieving a goal. We are all setting goals. We are doing it all the time. I, you know, your goal could be, I want to make an A on the next test. Well, what could be some things that might get in your way? It might be an internal roadblock. That's something with your, in your control. That could be your negative thoughts that you have that says, oh, I can't do this or, oh, I'm stupid. That's an example of an internal roadblock. You could say, that's not true. I am smart. I can do this. I have a growth mindset. I believe in myself. An external roadblock, that's something in your environment that's out of your control. Maybe the technology didn't work that day. So um, you want to be proactive. You want to plan for those roadblocks. And that's when you use the if-then plan. For example, let's look at that external roadblock. The one that said, the one that you said, well, I'll just study, you know, your test is on Wednesday. Well, I'll just study, you know, Tuesday night. I'll be fine. Well, you get home and the internet's out. So what do you do? You gonna fail the test? No. Uh, and if then plan, if the internet goes out, then I'm gonna go to my friend's house or then I'm gonna see if I can find a hot spot, or I'll email my teacher and say, hey, this is what, you know, this is what happened. Um, using if then plans, if remember is a cue that you can respond to quickly. And then is the specific action that you can do following the if. You can also use the when, like when then, when this happens, then I'll do that. So it could be if or then, but whatever it is, it's the cue. So I think of it as the if then plan. So that's just a really quick review. Uh, I hope you as a class will get together and figure out how to do this. Uh, if you guys want to, if you guys want to participate in this, I, I just strongly want to encourage you to do so because I really do believe it's going to help, A, helps you to learn these important tools that we're giving you. B, it's going to help you to build that community with, your, with the sixth graders. It's going to help them to feel encouraged, welcomed, and a part of the student body. And when you help somebody else succeed, then you succeed. So thank you in advance. Um, for all that you do and um, love the class of 2026. You guys rock.